We're gonna be working on this ACT SAT Casio calculator quiz, and we're gonna be using this Casio, the 115 ES Plus. And what I want to do is change this degrees and minutes to a, a decimal. I want to change that to a decimal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our calculator on, and then what we're gonna look for, we're gonna type in the 35, because I want the 35. So I'm gonna type in 35. And now I need that degree symbol. I need that degree symbol there. And that degree symbol is right there. Above the 8, above the English button, and there's the degree symbol. Now I'm going to type in 37. And I want to hit that button again. I want to hit that button again. So I have it looking just like the problem does. 35 degrees, 37 minutes. But notice it doesn't give me the, uh, the, the quote, the single quote. It gives me another circle. That's okay. Hit equals. And it shows up like that. Now what I want to do is I want to change it to a decimal. So I'm going to hit this SD button here. I hit that SD button, and it changes it to a fraction. I hit the SD button one more time, and there it is. It changes it to a decimal. So 35 degrees, 37 minutes as a decimal is 35 degrees. Actually, 35 point, I don't need that, 616 degrees. I actually don't need that there. 35.616, repetent degrees. Now I'm going to do 47 degrees, 30 minutes. So we're going to type in the 47, the 47. I'm going to hit the degree button. 47 degrees, 30. Then I'm going to hit that degree button, minutes button again. Then I hit equals. It brings it up in the bottom screen. Now you want to hit the SD button. You want to hit the SD button. Hit the SD button again, so it's going to be 47.5 degrees. 47.5 degrees. 45 degrees, 27 minutes and 30 seconds. So let's type that in. We're going to type in 45 degrees, 45. We're going to hit the degree button, degrees. 27 minutes. 27, hit the degree button again, DMS button. 30 seconds. Hit that again. Hit equals. It reiterates it down there. Now I'm going to want to hit the SD button. So I hit the SD button. I hit the SD button again. So it's going to be 45.4583 repetent. 45.4583 repetent degrees. If they ask you to do this with our calculator, the way to do it, to show the setup, this would be set up as 45 plus. 27 over. There are 60 minutes in an hour, plus 30, over. Now how many seconds are in an hour? There are 60 seconds times 60 minutes, which is 3,600 seconds. So that's how you would set it up. Now I want to change the decimal, 50.58 degrees, to degrees, minutes, seconds. So I'm going to go to the calculator, I'm going to type in 50.58, 50.58, 50, whoops, 50.58. Now I'm going to type the, the degree button, I'm going to hit the degree button, and now I'm going to take that and just hit the SD or hit equals. And boom, it does it for you. You don't even have to hit the SD button, you just hit equals. And it breaks it down rapidly. So that's going to be 50 degrees, 34 minutes, 48 seconds. 50 degrees, 34 minutes, 48 seconds. And notice the answer does give you the degrees, minutes, and seconds. The degree symbol, the quote, single quote, and the double quote. 32.45, 32.45, 32.45. I hit the degree button. I hit that degree button. Hit equals. And there it is. 32 degrees, 27 minutes. 32 degrees, 27 minutes. And I don't think I have to put the zero seconds. I don't think they want me to put that. Convert the decimal to a fraction. So we should know how to do this by hand, but this is just practicing on the calculator. So I'm going to type in 0.23 on my calculator, and then I'm just going to hit equals. And this calculator will generate the fraction for me, so that's 23 over 100. And that's what 0.23 means. It means 0.23 hundredths. 0.3 rep 10. I'm just going to hit 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and then I'm going to generate it a whole bunch of times. I'm going to run it out at least 16 times to overrun the, the calculator's program. And then I hit equals, and it breaks out the fraction, one third. So 0.3 rep 10 equals one third. 0.2 rep 10. So same thing, I'm going to type in 0 0.22222, 0 0.22222, 0 0.22222, 0 0.22222, fill up the screen, go a little bit past, hit equals, two nines. For this one, 0.13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, Hit the SD button, so it'll give you all three with the SD. Type in square root 20, the calculator will generate the answer for you. So you hit the square root button, then the 20, and hit equals, and it breaks it down for you. Two root five. Three root 18, again, the calculator will break it down for you. I'm going to type in the square of three, then the square root, then 18, three root 18. Hit equals, nine root two, it breaks it down. And then two over root 18, um, you're going to want to use this fraction button over here. I want to use this fraction button. I hit this fraction button, and it gives me the fraction. It's over there to the left, underneath, two down below the shift. And then I type in the two on top. Then I hit this down arrow. I hit the down arrow to take me down. That's the mouse key. And then square root 18 on the bottom. Hit equals. And it breaks it down and rationalizes it. Square root 2 over 3. For number 13, I want to type it in just like it looks. 3. Then I'm going to hit the square root button. Square root. 20. Now you have to be careful in right arrow. You want a right arrow to get out from underneath that radical. Plus. Square root, 180, type it in just like it looks. Again, be careful, you want a right arrow. Minus 2, square root, 75, and then hit equals. And bam, it condenses it for you. 12 root 5 minus 10 root 3. This whole monster equals 12 root 5 minus 10 root 3. For this system of equations, all you're going to do is hit mode. So you hit the mode button, mode, and then 5. Because this is equations, it's a system of equations, so I hit the 5. Notice it has the word equation there. Mode 5, 
and then one for x, y, and c. Notice it's ax plus by equals c. ax plus by equals c. So mode five, one, and then a ray of zeros appears. Now all I want to do is replace those zeros with the coefficients. Notice there's a one in front of that x. A two and then a one, so I'm going to hit one, and then equals, and it's going to slide over. Then I'm going to hit two, then equals. It's going to slide over. Now I want to type in that one there. I hit equals, and it slides over and down to that three. Type in the three, hit equals. Now there's a one in front of that y, it's the coefficient. So I type in the one, I hit equals. The eight, I hit equals. I hit equals again, and it'll tell me the x value. The x value equals three. I hit equals one more time, and it'll tell me the y value. And the y value is negative one. Now for this one, notice the top equation is in the ax plus by equals c, but the bottom equation is not. So we got to tweak it, we got to move it around a little. So what some people like to do is they like to add the 9x over to the other side. So that would give them 9x over here. They add 9x to both sides, and then they, they leave the 2y on the left side of the equal sign. So it's still plus 2y. And now that 12 is over on the, the incorrect side. It's over on the left side. I got to kick that 12 over to the other side, and that would give me negative 12. So I can't just jump right to mode 5, 1 to do the problem. I actually got to do some stuff to get it in the right format. So I'm going to mode 5, 1, mode. I'm going to hit number 5 for equation. 1 it has to be an ax plus by equals c, mode 5, 1. Now I'm going to type in 3, 5, 9, 9, 2, negative 12. 3, and then you hit equals. 5, and then you hit equals. 9, and hit equals. 2, hit equals. Oh, I messed up. I can back arrow. Notice I was looking up here. I went and put the 2 in. I want to put a 9 in. So I hit 9. And hit equals. 2. Hit equals. And negative 12. Hit equals. Equals again. Notice the x value is negative 2. Hit equals again. The y value is 3. Now for this monster. For this monster, I'm going to go mode 5, 2. Bigger x. So I'm going to hit mode. For this one, I have a large system of equations. I'm going to go to mode 5. See the equation? And then... 2, and it's ax plus by plus cz. I have an x, y, and z. Notice I have an x, y, and z. Equals a number, some number. So mode 5, 2, and I get an array of 9 zeros, and I have to replace each zero. So a 2 equals a 1, there's a 1 in front of the y, equals, then a negative 2 equals, then a 31 equals. A 1 equals, a negative 2 equals, a negative 3 equals, a, oops, I have to delete that. I can go back and delete that. I accidentally hit the 3, so negative, I'm sorry, delete. I hit the delete button to get rid of it, and now I can accurately enter in the 23 equals, it brings me down here, there's a 1 hidden in front of that, equals, negative 2, equals 1 in front of the Z, there's a hidden 1 in front of that Z, that's a 1Z, equals, it moves over, the last number is 3, I hit equals now, I'm trying to solve for X, X is 10, this is basically everything I can do with the calculator that has to deal with X squared, notice it's a 2X squared, minus 12X plus 16, that's when you find the X intercepts, the Y intercepts, the axis of symmetry, the vertex, rewrite it in vertex form, find the domain and the range, so in order to solve an X squared problem, we're going to implement mode, 5, and then you'll notice next to the 3, it has the x squared. So mode 5, 3, I'm going to use mode 5, 3 to generate the x squared. Again, an array of 3 zeros. I'm going to replace those zeros. Notice that a equals, a equals 2. I hit equals, it slides over. b is negative 12. I hit equals, that slides over, that, and the last c is 16. Hit equals, and my x sub 1 equals 4. What that means when I put x sub 1 equals 4, I go right on the x-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I pop a dot. That x sub 1 equals 4 is an x-intercept. I hit equals again. My x sub 2 is 2. On the graph, that means I go right 1, 2, and place a dot. The y-intercept, we don't need the calculator for. We just look at the equation. The y-intercept is going to be 16 if it's in standard form. So 0, 16 is the y-intercept. I can't go up 16 on my graph, so I have to leave that blank. I can't really graph it. The AOX, after x sub 2, if I hit equals, that x down min is my axis of symmetry. x equals 3. Um, this is a little tricky. You have to write x equals 3. It's an actual line, vertical line that goes through 3. The vertex, I'm going to take that 3 and rewrite it over there. That 3 goes there. Now to find out what the y value is, I hit equals again, and the y value minimum is negative 2. I now have the information I need to graph this thing in its entirety. I can now go to 3, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, down 2, and notice it's right on the axis of symmetry, and that's the vertex. Now I'm going to implement this process of 1, 3, 5. I write that down, and then I notice the 2 in front of the x squared, the leading coefficient, and I put that in front of the 1, 3, 5. What's 2 times 1? 2. What's 2 times 3? 6. What's 2 times 5? 10. So this is going to give me the spots to plot from the vertex. From this vertex of 2, negative 3, I go up 2 over 1. And it lands on the coordinate that I've already found. From there, I'm going to go up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over 1. Pop that dot. Now from there, I'm supposed to go up 10, but I don't have enough room. So I'm going to go back to the vertex. Go up 2, 1, 2, over 1 to the left. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over 1 to the left. And then do my graph of my parabola. The domain of this parabola, notice it goes to the left forever and to the right forever. So the domain is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, the lowest value on this parabola, the lowest y value on this parabola is negative 2. So it starts at negative 2 and then goes all the way up to positive infinity. So it goes from 2 to infinity. Notice I can put my pencil on negative 2, so I put a bracket on that. But I can never touch infinity, so I put a parenthesis. It also asks me for vertex form. Notice I have the vertex here. I have the leading coefficient here and down here. To write in vertex form, you need that leading coefficient. Then you write a set of parentheses with the squared and then an x up in the front of the parentheses. 
and it's nice that I have it right underneath my vertex to write it in vertex form. What's the opposite of three? That's negative three. And what's the same as negative two? Negative two. So that's the vertex form. That's standard form. X intercepts, the Y intercept you look at, it's just that value there. The axis of symmetry is the X value from the vertex, and that's the Y value of the vertex. The domain of any X squared is all real numbers, and the range starts from the bottom point of the vertex to infinity. If it was negative, these values would be flipped. Now I'm asked to solve. X squ 18 X squared minus 9X minus 14. Once again, I'm going to implement mode 5, 3. So all I do is hit mode, then the 5 for equation, and notice the 3 for the X squared. See the X squared? So mode 5, 3, and it gives me an array of three zeros. I replace the first zero with this 18. Then negative 9. Then negative 14. I hit equals, I hit equals, and all I want you to do is solve it. So notice X sub 1, I'm just going to copy down as 7 over 6. I hit equals again, and I get x sub 2 as negative 2 over 3. Now I want to solve number 19. I'm going to implement mode 5, 3 again. Mode, notice the 5, it's solving the equation 5, and then the 3 is an x squared. Mode 5, 3, my a value is that coefficient of 1. Oops. Mode, mode 5, 3, I type in 1, I hit equals, then I type in negative 1, hit equals, then I type in negative 1 again, hit equals. And my first x sub 1 is 1 plus root 5 over 2. 1 plus root 5 over 2. And then I hit equals again, and notice it'll toggle to a negative. So another way to write this is 1 plus or minus square root 5 over 2. For number 20, it's an x cubed. I can solve an x cubed. All I have to do is hit the mode button. Mode 5, it's an equation. But notice it's to the third power. So mode 5, 4 has a, a x to the third power. So I'm going to hit mode 5, 4. And that gives me an array of zeros. Now the zeros are so far out there that you can't see them all. But we're going to follow along. I type in a 1 for leading coefficient. And it moves over. Now I'm going to type in a negative 4. It moves over. Now I'm going to type in a negative 7. It moves over, and the last number would be 10. I hit equals. I hit equals again. And it's thinking. And my first answer, my first x sub 1, is 5. I hit equals again. My second answer is 1. And because it's an x cubed, there's three answers. I hit equals again, and my third answer is negative 2. <clears throat> now I'm going to solve number 21. And notice again, it's a cubic. So I'm going to hit mode 5, 4. Mode 5, and then 4, because 4 goes to the third power. <clears throat> now I'm going to type in those leading coefficients of 1. The 1 from the x cubed. 1. I hit equals, it moves over. I type in 2. I hit equals, it moves over. Now there's a 1 in front of that x. So I type in the leading coefficient of 1. I hit equals, it moves over. And the last number is 2. I type in 2. I hit equals. And then I hit equals again. And it'll give me my x sub 1 equals negative 2. I hit equals again. And this is strange. That is an i. My x sub 2 is an i. I don't need to hit equals again, but I will. But I know that the i follows another one. A negative i. They go in pairs. So my x sub 3 would be negative i. Imaginary numbers and square roots always travel in complex or irrational pairs. They're called conjugates. Now I'm asked to solve number 22. If we're observant, we notice 22 is just like number 18. See how 18 is 18x squared minus 9x minus 14? I can, so I can factor 18 if I have the solutions for 18. So notice I have x equals 7 over 6. What's the opposite of divide by 6? So the opposite of dividing is multiplying. I'm going to kick that 6 out in front of that x. So that would give me a 6x. Now what's the opposite of positive 7? That would be minus 7. Now for the second one, what's the opposite of divide by 3? And that's going to be multiplied by 3. I'm going to push that 3 out in front of the x. So that's going to give me 3x. And then what's the opposite of minus 2? And that would be plus 2. Notice you can check this. What's 6x times 3x? Isn't that 18x squared? And then negative 7 times positive 2, isn't that negative 14? And if I do 2 times 6x, that would be 12x. Minus negative 7 times 3, minus 21x. Notice, those add up to the middle term. You can check your work. Now I'm asked to factor number 23. But notice, for number 19, I'm sorry, for number 20, it's the same problem. Number 20 and number 23 are both the same problem. Same values. So if I look at the answers for number 20, if it's x equals 5, the factor is going to be x minus 5. Notice how it's x equals 1, the factor would be x minus 1. And if it's x equals negative 2, the factor would be x plus 2. I'm asked to simplify now. Once I see an i, I'm going to take my calculator and just hit mode. And then 2. Mode 2. Notice we'll turn it into complex mode. Mode 2. And you can see it misspelled at the top. Complex at the top of the calculator. Once I'm in mode 2, all I'm going to do is type this in exactly like it looks. I'm going to hit the parentheses button. Notice the parentheses button. Then the 7 minus 5. Now I have to find the i. The i is just above the 8, which is the English button. There's a little i there. So I hit the English button. 5i. Then I close parentheses. I open parentheses. Negative, not minus. That's negative 2. Minus 3. And then I go back and hit the i button, the English button. Close parentheses. It will foil it out for you. You hit equals, and it does all the arithmetic for you. So that's going to be negative 29 minus 11i. Negative 29 minus 11i. Pretty convenient. Now, I don't have to 